All right, so after surrendering a 24 pack of toilet paper to some random dodgy bloke, I now have a brand new Vodafone Smart N10 4G. Because the currency in Australia is currently toilet paper. Money means absolutely nothing. That joke is gonna be completely forgotten about in about three months. Greetings everyone and welcome back to yet again another video. Today we're going to be looking at a cheapo smartphone. Now we're not going to be looking at any old phone today. We're going to be looking at a smartphone that is sold here in Australia currently for $149. I'm not sure what that is in USD, Euro or anything like that. I'll splice it here. And it is locked to the Vodafone network. So please factor in all of this. For $149 you are getting a smartphone locked to a network that doesn't have the best specs in the world and you can easily purchase a secondhand device online for a lot cheaper or alternatively just go on to Banggood or your chosen website and buy something from Xiaomi, Oppo, etc., etc. because that's the better option. However, let's just say that you don't have access to that, you don't have access to anything else, you just want a smartphone, you're on the Vodafone network and you go, hey, I'm gonna purchase that. So let's keep that in mind today. Okay, so I didn't trade a 24 pack of toilet paper for this, I actually paid $109 for this because it was on sale. But I have this here, the Vodafone Smart N10 4G. It has a 5.7 inch display, an 8 megapixel camera, and 16 gigs of internal memory, expandable up to 128 gig. Micro SD card sold separately, of course it is. Android, 4G, bonus $30 of prepaid credit, which is always nice. But when we turn the box over, the future is exciting, ready? Nah, not really, the future's not that exciting, to be honest. All screen for an all good experience. That's a lie. That is a complete lie. I've known about this device for a couple of months now and it's been sold at Vodafone, Big W, Woolworths and pretty much everywhere else that sells cheap tech. And I've seen this and I've wanted to purchase it, but I actually got my hands on one today at Cash Converters and had a look at it and then thought, I'm gonna go buy one brand new and see what it's like. So that's why I have it. But I can tell you the all screen for an all good experience is just so not true at all. With the 5.7 inch all screen HD plus IPS LCD 19.9 notch display, not, yeah, notch, cool, notch. Big battery, eight megapixel rear camera with four times digital zoom, five megapixel front camera, HD video, and the latest Android 9.0. Uh, not the latest, but okie dokie. You can enjoy a really good experience. I hope so too. But yeah, basically the specs are here. They don't even tell you the RAM or the processor or anything like that. It's just like, ah, that's fine. But there's another box inside of this box, so we'll see what that says. And just a side note, on the Vodafone website for this device, it doesn't even feature the RAM or the processor or anything like that. Instead, I had to look it up on GSM Arena, where it says that it has a Helio A22 chipset, uh, which is a quad core with two gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of storage, but it says 13 megapixels for the rear camera and eight megapixels for the front, but this says eight megapixels for the rear and five for the front. Fair enough, I'm very confused. But anyways, let's go ahead and unbox this box and see what box is inside of this box. Also, this only comes in one color, which is blue borealis. At this time of year, at this time of day, in this part of the country, localized entirely within your, well, it's not a kitchen, it's a, uh, it's a room. Yes. All right, let's go full and jerry-rig everything on this thing. That was so much easier than I thought. The box doesn't even take up all the space of this box. What a waste of a box. Now, if I remember correctly, Vodafone devices are made by ZTE and obviously not via Vodafone, but this could have changed, maybe? I don't know, but the last time I knew about it, it was ZTE that was behind making these, but don't quote me on that, I could be wrong here. On the front of the box here, we have the back of the device here. I don't know if you can take the rear cover off, but we will see soon. The back of the rear cover is actually quite nice, and I will show you that soon. We have more specs, 5.7 inch all screen, HD plus screen resolution, 2900 milliamp hour battery, cameras, all that sort of stuff. I still don't know the processor, it just, just won't tell me. And the contents include a Vodafone Smart N10 device, of course it should, a charger, a USB cable, a headset, a setup guide, and safety and warranty information. All good. And still nothing about the actual manufacturer, just says Vodafone, so Vodafone makes Vodafone devices? Who knows, okay. And covering my precious IMEI information, we have that the device is called a VFD630, and the LTE bands are B1357820 28B, which should work mostly on the Vodafone network. I don't think it'll work on Telstra, but I'm actually unsure if this device will actually work on other networks. In the past, I've been able to unlock Vodafone devices from Vodafone, but I'm not too sure at this point because they may have altered the bands in this to make it incompatible with other networks, I'm not too sure. But yeah, there's the color, Blue Borealis. It's a pretty cool name. 
Also, just quickly, I was working on really dusty computer parts for a couple of hours and my hands just started to get all dry from working on it. So, um, yeah, sorry they look iffy. I hope we can all look past that. Anyways, taking this off, we have the device. I can't wait to pick on it. We have a whole bunch of manuals here. Setup guide, safety and warranty, and the warranty cards. I really don't need them. I'm going to be tearing this thing apart anyways. Uh, we have an oh. Okay, it comes with a free SIM eject tool, yay! Uh, we get a USB cable, it is micro USB. Now this smartphone originally was released back in 2019, but it didn't really come here into Australia until probably September 2019, but still we're using micro USB. Cheap. Uh, we get some pretty tacky looking headphones, I'll try them and let you guys know. And we get a charger here, which is just a 5 volt 1 amp charger, nothing out of the ordinary there. And that's it, unboxing experience done, nothing else, that's it, no cases, no screen protectors, no nothing, it is just basic. Now let me remind you all again, this is $149 in Australia right now, locked to the Vodafone network. Opening up the little bag, we get the phone. Now all looks very dandy, doesn't it? Yeah, you wait. You wait and see. So, Smart 10, all the specs again, all good. All right, I'm going to take off the sticker in a second, but I just wanted to show you guys something. The manufacturer is Vodafone Procurement. Procurement? With the company S.A.R.L in Luxembourg. Okay, fair enough. So, it's not ZTE. Well, there you go. Looking at the back of the device, this looks really cool it is very nice and grippy and this pattern reminds me of a certain oppo phone i can't remember which one but it has a blue back and then it's like prisms and stuff like that even if you remember some of the old nokia prism phones that had sort of the squares and cool but there we go we have our main camera at the back there which is our 8 megapixel one presumably it says designed by vodafone with the little vodafone logo and we have a single led flash just there but that back cover is actually textured you can feel each individual groove, and it does feel quite nice, I will admit that. But of course, the phone's all plastic, so nothing premium, but you do certainly get what you pay for, even though this is really not a good deal at all, but still. And we have the volume rockers as well as the power button, and these are both plastic. The power button is red accented, so that's pretty cool. At the top of the device, we have a secondary microphone hole, as well as a headphone jack, which that's always appreciated, of course. Side here we have our SIM tray, which we'll open up in a second, and at the bottom of the device we have our micro USB port, as well as two speaker grill areas, but I believe it's only just one single firing speaker. Ejecting the SIM card tray, we have support for a micro SD card, as well as a nano SIM. No dual SIM support because the device is network locked, so that's obviously not going to be included. Now for the moment of truth, this screen protector is deceiving. Are you ready folks? Are you ready? Please, please be prepared. Let me just show you the size of the bezels on this thing. The chin is bigger than Thanos' chin. Sorry, Thanos. You got a big chin, mate. And the top of the device here with the notch, it just... This design makes no sense. For a full screen display, why not just use the 18 by 9 aspect ratio and make the screen come down a little bit, have the camera and earpiece? No, we want it to have a notch and make it look like it's from 2016, all right? Like the iPhone, so that's what we're going to do. And that's what they did. It makes no sense. It makes zero sense. Taking off the little protective piece off the back camera here reveals we have this little area, but I don't know if it's glass or not. Nope, it's plastic. However, the camera lens is actually got glass on it. So camera lens has glass on it, but this little piece here is plastic and obviously the recover is all plastic, but I don't want to damage it because it looks nice. And the front of the device is using a protective glass layer, which is Dragon Trail glass. Not Gorilla glass, it's Dragon Trail glass, which actually sounds kind of cool. It only gets better when you power on the device, so let's see if it has any juice. There we go. All looks promising. There we go. Just take a look at the bezel size. Yeah. Yep. Now keep in mind, for an extra like 50 or 60 bucks, you can go with the Samsung A20, which is a lot better than this for sure. But 
It was released in 2019. I get it's a budget phone, but holy moly. Even some of the clones that I've got off Wish, the bezels are not that big. That's a decent portion of the screen right there, just completely just washed away. And for all those that want to know, the screen to body ratio is 77.8%, which is quite abysmal to be fairly honest. But anyways, let me go ahead and set this thing up and we'll start having a look at it because there's not a lot this thing offers. It's very budget. I just wanted to show you guys the the bezels. The bezels, man, the bezels. Oh, there's no fingerprint sensor on here or anything like that. There's no underscreen one, none of that. It has face unlock though, so just face unlock. You're better off using a pin or pattern or whatever. Even the face unlock says someone who looks like you could unlock your phone. So just what? Hmm, why not have it? The battery is not removable. Do not disassemble. If your device becomes unresponsive, press and hold the power button for 11 seconds to restart it. If the phone cannot be powered on, charge the battery for 15 minutes and try again. Ha. I'm about to end this whole man's career. All right. Booting it up, we get this lovely, you know, Android 9 experience, which has got going for it, Android 9, even though, you know, Android 10, okay, but there's even sort of slight discoloration going around the notch area, and even down at the chin area as well, there's some discoloration just slightly going along the edges here. So not a lot of great detail has been applied here, it's just sort of a slap happy design. Back of the device makes it look really good. Then you look at the front and go, while it looks sort of somewhat premium, no, no. Don't forget, $149 and it's locked to Vodafone. Fair. Fair enough. Alright, so with it on, we got a couple of things installed. Instagram's installed by default, Facebook, uh, my Vodafone, parental restrictions, Google Translate's also on there. So a couple of extra things added, which is not out of the ordinary for a device that's branded by a network. They usually include some extra bloatware and stuff, but that's probably something you can uninstall if you want to, customize it and all that sort of thing. But look, we've got the basic applications on here, so nothing that really needs to be addressed. Everything on this screen, we basically know what it does, so that's fine. So we'll jump straight into settings. We have network and internet, which has just Wi-Fi and all that sort of stuff. No NFC, unfortunately. This is a bare bones device. Uh, connected to devices, just Bluetooth. Apps and notifications. Obviously, we can see all the apps installed like Instagram and my Vodafone parental restrictions and stuff, which that there was actually included on the box as a feature. So yeah, fair enough. If a kid goes to school with that, it's going to look pretty sick, but then they show the front of it and uh, it's not that good. Nothing else there. Uh, coming down to battery, we have 89%. Should last until about 11 o'clock, which that time is incorrect because I haven't connected it to my Wi-Fi network, so it hasn't updated. Display-wise, we have brightness level, screen color method. Oh, we can change the, the tones of it. Doesn't do much, but the technology of the screen is just an IPS LCD, nothing special. Adaptive brightness, that's already on, yep. Display clocking status bar, which it is. Wallpapers, let's have a look at the wallpapers. We only have one wallpaper. I guess that's the nicest one they could have chosen. Uh, we have a notification LED up the top of the device, I would say, which is pretty cool. Sound wise, media, call volume, all that sort of stuff. Phone ringtone, let's see what that is. Oh, I've heard that too many times before. Charging sounds, touch sounds, all that stuff, nothing unusual. Storage wise, we have 38% used of the 16 gigs of inbuilt storage. We have 9.87 gig free. Basically 40% of the storage is used right out of the box. So probably best to add an SD card because most people are gonna probably fill that nine gigs of storage fairly quickly anyways. Security and location, all that sort of stuff. Screen lock, yeah, we can choose face unlock, which, well, it's there. Now with the face unlock, I'll come back to this later. I just wanna go through everything first and we'll come back to that. Accounts, you can add your Gmail and all that sort of stuff. Smart safety, emergency, share location, all that stuff. Parental restrictions, parental restrictions. It's a bit of a tongue twister for me. Parental restrictions. I, yeah, that sounds horrible. But yeah, it's good for a kid, but seriously, you can get other devices for a kid for cheaper. But anyways, accessibility, all the accessibility stuff. Um, combine channels and playing audio. Someone actually said in the comments to do that to increase the loudness. So I'm actually going to do that and see if that makes a difference while we do the speaker test. Google services, system, we have the model number being VFD630, and just checking the build number and the kernel versions, nothing special, nothing out of the ordinary. I have already enabled developer options and the window animations are down to 0.5, so that should speed things up a little tiny bit. 
All right, what I'm gonna do is put an SD card in, put a SIM card in, and we're gonna start testing out this device to its full potential and see what it is capable of. All right, putting my SIM card in and SD card in, the phone restarted about six times before it actually is finally stable and working now. So that's, uh, that was a bit concerning because I'd press the power button and nothing was happening. Like it said, at startup, you have to hold it down for it to do its thing. Okay, I'll do that then. All right, let's go ahead and test the call quality of this thing. Um, just a note though that it doesn't actually support VOLTE, I think it's voice over LTE, so that's disabled. So it's probably just going to be pretty standard to be honest, but we'll see what happens. Okay, yep, testing, sounds okay. And yep, I can hear as well. Sounds alright to be honest. Okay, so verdict on that one, it's alright, it'll do. Now, I've also just realised that you can't hide the notch anywhere in here. I'll go through the settings again, just to make sure. Okay, so searching through settings, you get simulator display with a cutout and developer options. Okay, well, that's pretty useful. All right, let's try face unlock and see how fast and responsive that is. Just an experiment, just seeing if it'll pick up the camera as a face. It won't. Does work, a little slow though. All right, I have a couple of ugly selfies on my main device, so I'm gonna hold my phone at the lock screen and see if it unlocks. Well, conclusion with that, it doesn't work. I thought it would have worked, but no, it doesn't. Maybe a, an actual photo, maybe? I don't know. I don't know how well the technology for the face unlocking is on this device, but it's just the front camera taking a photo and that's really it, that's all it is. One thing I do wanna open now is camera. Let's go have a look and see what camera has to offer. Stock camera, here we go. You can just flip it like that and then flip it like that. That's pretty cool. But you do have a couple of options here. We have panorama, portrait, Obviously we don't have a secondary depth sensor, so it's just software, that's all it is. Photo, video, and beauty mode, all that will make me look pretty. Coming into the photo settings though, it does say that it is only eight megapixels. Maybe the 13 megapixel means that it's interpolated to 13 megapixels from eight, if that makes sense, should do. Um, but otherwise, not a lot of stuff going on in here. Video quality is only 1080p, but we can do 720p plus, which is 18 by 9. Which, that's kind of an alright feature, I guess. It's also in the camera settings, we have manual, night, and time lapse. So that's pro mode, night mode, and time lapse. So just selecting pro mode, we get ISO exposure, shutter speed, white balance, etc., etc. So that's pretty cool. I just stick to the automatic settings that are already on the camera, so I'll probably do that. But if you guys have this device and want to play around with the pro settings, feel free. I might also take a night shot and see how that turns out as well. So now I'll go ahead and take some photos and videos and show you all what it looks like. Testing the rear video camera quality of the Vodafone Smart N10. There's no EIS or anything, it's pretty standard. Sorry about all the wind, can't really do much about that. It seems to actually be correcting colours pretty well, and it does focus. Not too bad. And just making sure the left microphone works as well as the right one, because it should be dual. And yeah, you can see all the details in the brick wall. That's pretty good. Good I'll do it. I'll pay anyone 50 bucks to get rid of all this crap in my backyard, please. Thank you. Okay, this is 720p plus, which I don't see a whole lot of difference between this and 1080p. Except the resolution, of course. But otherwise, uh, yeah, seems to be good. Well, the front video quality looks okay. Just trees just hitting my face. I'm fine, perfectly fine. All right, I had a quick play around with the camera and uh, it seems fairly average, but hopefully 
it turns out all right. I mean, for 150 bucks, got to have something decent. All right, let's go ahead and do the speaker test now. Let's see how loud this thing is. So we'll open... Oh yeah, play music, that's right. There's no dedicated music app. You gotta use play music. Now I will actually address something. The phone is actually getting quite warm, especially around here. So I reckon that's probably where the CPU is, somewhere along here. Battery's probably down here. I don't know, once we tear it down, we'll get to see. But yeah, it's getting pretty, pretty hot. Of course, using BFG Division by Mick Gordon from the 2016 Doom game, because Doom Eternal is now eight days away. Crazy. We shall now use BFG Division to show how powerful the speaker is with my meter. I think the maximum we've ever got to on a smartphone in the last couple of weeks or months anyways was like 105. So we'll see if that beats it. All right, so we got to 102.6, which isn't that bad. But I have to say, the speaker is actually not that bad, to be honest. It actually doesn't sound half bad at all. It's quite loud, quite clear. So that does get an acceptable pass from me. All right, let me go ahead and connect to my Wi-Fi network, and we'll see if we can do a software update. Holy moly, we have a 700 meg update. I'll let that install and see how we go. All right, so it's been a couple of days since I was last filming. In that time, I have downloaded apps onto this device to test it out and all that sort of stuff. I've also tested the battery. I ran a bunch of stuff on it and killed the battery. And then I put it on charge. And about six hours later, it was at about 80%. And then I kind of fell asleep. So I think it's about seven hours roughly that it takes to charge completely from 0% to 100% because there's no quick charge in this. It's just it's all standard. And I also did a standby test for 24 hours. I uh, left it on 100% with Wi-Fi, cell, all that sort of stuff. And it dropped to 72%, which this only has a 2,900 milliamp hour battery. So you can't expect it to last all day, but it is what it is. Now we're gonna jump into the internet test as well as the YouTube test. Now, a couple of comments actually said, can you check the DRM info on these devices? And I said, well, I may as well in the next couple of ones, but I should have done it in the previous ones. So I'll launch DRM info on here. Now, supposedly if it's L1, we're good. If it's L3, we are not good. And as we can see, our Widevine security level is L3 instead of L1. So you can only do 480p stuff on here, unfortunately. I actually might run it on the Yuma DG Power and um, splice in the information here. I'm not too sure what certification that will get, but it'll be interesting to see anyways. So now that you know that, let's go ahead and do the internet and YouTube test. I typed in Yuma DG Power 3 and mine's the sixth one in the list. So that's pretty good. I wish I had as usual. Okay, we can do 720p, so I'll do that. Inception, yay, I've always wanted to do this. Again and again. All right, as for the YouTube test, seems fairly good. You can see a lot of the black bars going on here. I don't know if we can make it full, oh, we can. Okay, so that's full size there. But you can see the obnoxious chin and notch. But that's not really a great full screen experience because yeah, you've got half of that just chopped off. And then if you have it like that, you've got massive black bars just everywhere. But hey, that's why I'm picking on this phone because of the bezels. And still, I can't get over the price. 150 bucks Australian, man. It just, ugh, crazy. So with the DRM info, I'm pretty sure it's 480p for streaming, like Netflix and all that sort of stuff. And then 720p for YouTube, if it's L3. If it's L1, it can do everything. I'm not too up to date on all that sort of info, but hopefully I got it all correct, but we'll see. Let's do internet test, but what are we gonna do internet test wise? What, what can we do? Um, we're gonna run a speed test. My internet is very, very slow. I know that. Yeah, yep, good old internet. And size-wise for the device, it's not too bad, considering it's only a 5.7 inch display. It's a pretty relatively small phone by today's standards. I mean, there's the S10 next to it, so kind of gives you a bit of an idea. It's just a very 
cheapy, plasticky one, but that's okay. But look at that, 149 bucks for this thing. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Well, there it all is there. These specifications, see what I mean? I mean, you've already seen this at the start of the video, but like even the bands aren't listed or anything like that. It's just very blasé about this phone. It's just like, yep, here's a phone. It does 4G and the screen resolution is 720 by 1500. So, okay, there you go. Physical keypad, no. The only phones that have physical keypads are a couple of select Blackberries. Why would you even have that in your specs? Anyways, whatever. Um, look, internet browsing seems pretty good, to be honest. I mean, it really depends what you're going to be doing, but I would assume just most internet browsing is going to be quite fine on this device. I don't see any problems with it whatsoever. It's not Android 9 Go Edition or anything like that. It's just straight up Android 9. So I think what they could have done is put the Go Edition on here to make things a little bit more seamless, I guess, if that makes sense. But anyways, but that is my opinion. You don't have to listen to it. It's all good. But Android Go would have been probably better for this. I didn't try headphones in this. So what I'm going to do is try headphones and try BFG Division again and see how it sounds. Because in sound here, there's no enhancements or anything like we've seen before on MediaTek devices. And since this is a MediaTek device, I thought there would have been, you know, the sound enhancements and stuff. But no, none of that on here. Unless Vodafone have customized it to not have that, maybe? Who knows? Anyways, I'll plug in some headphones and see how it sounds. As for headphones, nothing special really. No enhancements or anything. Sounds pretty flat, to be fair. I did happen to test the headphones that are included with this. I was better off sticking tin cans to my ears because they were absolutely horrible. There you go, got that out of the way. <laughs> Majority of bundled earphones with devices are usually crap anyways, but these are pretty terrible, as you'd expect anyways. Next up, I think we're gonna try some gaming on this thing. Now this time we've got Call of Duty, Minecraft, just a trial though, because I'm too cheap to buy the real thing. And we have Ark Survival Evolved because a lot of people said that that's very demanding, and I want to see how demanding that is. But anyways, uh, let's go ahead and we'll try Minecraft first. Why not? Yep. It feels so out of proportion with the... I don't know, this just takes up so much room. The screen's just like shifted. It's like if I had it there. I don't know. It feels... Ah, uh, just don't listen to me. It's okay. Okay, here we go. Whoa. Alrighty. Yeah, this is actually playable. I mean, it's not really that demanding, I don't think, but still, no, I'm actually fairly impressed. This runs quite well, probably nearing 60 FPS. There's a little bit of stutter here and there, but no, it's definitely far from being not playable. Minecraft is a pass from me. Ooh, it only gets worse though. Let's try Call of Duty. Okay, well, here's the main menu. Looks promising. It is definitely not optimized for having the notch either. Oh well. Okay. Oh shit, sorry. Okay, well, that seems all right. Um, can I change the settings just quickly? So the graphic quality is low by default and I don't think you can change that or anything. Uh, medium settings, for the frame rate, um, depth of field is now on. So I guess we'll see how that goes. There we go. Well, that's playable. That's far from not playable. Obviously, when there's more action on screen, there's probably going to be a little bit of lag going on. And this is only an AI match, so it doesn't matter. I can do what I want. I can run around and be stupid. That's fine, because if I was in an actual match, I would be absolutely... Uh, look, I'd be tearing myself apart. Okay, well, that was actually quite surprising. I didn't actually think that Call of Duty would run as smooth as it did on this. All right, well, I'll um, try Ark and see if that does anything to it, because you guys have said that that's like a killer of phones, like it just runs really badly on some devices. I don't know, we'll, we'll see what it does. For some reason, while this is loading, I feel like the Jurassic Park theme is just gonna start blaring out of the speakers. Hey, I was close, and I've never even played this before. Okay, options. What do we have in options? Graphics quality, low. Resolution is about less than halfway. Show character names and all that sort of stuff. Uh, let's just have it as default. Okay, so for a while, Play Arc was actually grayed out, and then it says here, enable at your own risk. This device does not support Vulcan and will not show the world correctly. Okay. Well, that's fine. Let's just play it and see what it does. Uh, play single player. Uh, casual. This is gonna be fun. Uh... Uh, it's not showing anything. I see a HUD. 
I see nothing. It doesn't even run on this, so I guess you guys are right. Arc Survival Evolved does require a pretty decent device to run, but um, well, that's my experience. It doesn't run on this. Yeah, I'm not too sure. It doesn't want to seem to display anything, so if you guys know the fix for this, please let me know. Otherwise, I don't think it's going to run on this regardless. All right, so gaming on this wasn't a complete fail. Call of Duty worked, Minecraft worked, but Ark didn't end up working, most likely because the hardware just isn't up to it. But look, let's just assume that like Need for Speed and Asphalt will probably be fine on this. But I guess testing games on this is more of a novelty than anything because I don't imagine a lot of people going out and buying this thing. So anyways, um, we've got Geekbench to try. Let's go ahead and do that and see what the scores will be. All right, let's try Geekbench and see what that comes up with. Okay, so that's the first I've ever seen this. Geekbench encountered an error communicating with the Geekbench browser, unless it's down at the moment. All right, so I just installed it on my S10 just quickly, and it seems to be running fine. So either it doesn't work on this one, or I just need to connect it to a different Wi-Fi network, so I'll try that. Okay, I've tried a different Wi-Fi network. I've rebooted the device. I've tried to reinstall Geekbench. Nothing. And this is Geekbench 5 as well, which is the one we need to show the most accurate results. If I use Geekbench 4, it shows ridiculously high scores, and then all you guys go, hey, what's going on here? And this happens as, what the hell just happened? What? What? Are you okay? Are you okay, phone? All right, cool. Wow, that was a uh, bit of a trip there. Look, if we just basically grab whatever the Human Digi Power 3 showed and then just half that, that's probably what this will be. I guess, if that makes sense. Judging by the gaming test and stuff, it's not that bad. So I'm gonna open some spec applications real quickly. And just go through them just to show you guys what it comes up with. All right, CPU-Z, open that up. 5.67 inches, 720 by 1498, which is pretty close to what they said. Total sort of RAM, two gigs. Internal storage, 16 gig, we know that. Android 9, all that sort of good stuff. Battery, doesn't say anything about the milliamp hours or anything. No thermal data, that is an ad. Sensors, we've got a couple of them, nothing special. And that's pretty much it. A to 64 should show me the camera, shouldn't it? So A to 64 says eight megapixels for the rear and five megapixels for the front. Obviously there's no reason to lie about the system specifications, but I just thought it was a bit weird that it says 13 megapixels and then eight for the front. And then it's, yeah, they could have just changed it. Or as I said, it's interpolated to the higher one. Who knows? Yeah, Helio A22 is the MT6761V. So there you go. All right, so before we head into the teardown, let's just go over a little bit of a quick conclusion of what I think of this device. So straight away, it's not worth it. <laughs> For the price, 149 Australian, you can get better devices, obviously from Xiaomi, as I said in the beginning of the video, um, before even showing this phone at all. Uh, that's probably the better option, but if you just want to go straight into a Vodafone store and say, hey, I need a 4G device, and they hand this over to you for 150 bucks, uh, I don't know, like, it's, it's okay for a couple of things, you know, internet browsing, gaming, all that sort of stuff, it's not too bad, it will do the job, but the fact that it's locked to the Vodafone network, um, actually, I'm going to look up to see how much it costs to unlock from the Vodafone network. All right, so just quickly looking up, from Vodafone itself, it's $25 Australian to unlock it to all networks. When I say all networks, I'm not guaranteeing it's going to work with all networks, but if we go 149 plus 25, we're up to $174 Australian, which I'm not too sure what that is in USD. The cost is getting higher and higher for a device that just is not worth it for that money. Like I'm lucky to get it for the price I did get it for, $109, so I could get it unlocked and then it might be okay. But considering it's just purely for this review, the money that I've already put into it, it's not worth continuing to put money into it when I'm not gonna use it or anything. And honestly, I'm not gonna sell this on to try and make a profit or anything because it's just not worth it. Because I don't recommend anyone to really purchase this unless they're in dire need to buy this for some reason. I don't know. But otherwise, that's just my little bit of a ramble for this device. Why don't they just take the, the space that they're using for the chins and bezels and reorganize it? I, I don't know. Hey, let's make a phone from 2019 look like a phone from 2016 with a notch and big chins and woo, yay. Nifty, still the back looks nice. Let's go ahead and tear this down and then follow it up with the final conclusion and stuff and I'll end this video because god damn. It's always long ass videos, but I like to go in depth with everything and cover everything I can and fingerprints, my god. All right, let's take this thing apart and see what we can find. All right, it's time to tear down the Vodafone Smart N10. I really do like the back cover. 
That's quite nice. Hopefully I don't damage it. Taking the sim and SD tray out, I'm gonna just start shimming my pry tool just along the sides here and just release it and hopefully we get inside of it because there's no screws or anything holding it down. Unless this is holding some hidden screws. All right, unsnapping all these snaps. You get the back cover there so that it's just glued into place. Nothing special. Here is inside of the device. Battery-wise, it does state that it does have 3,000 milliamp hours as the max capacity, but average capacity is about 2,900 milliamp hours, which, yeah, so be it. I'll go ahead and take the bottom cover off, and we can see what's under here. Obviously, just the charging port, but hey, you never know. All right, and taking the rear cover off, we can see the speaker just there, which is a pretty average size one. And then inside of the device, we can see the contacts for that, as well as the main charging board there. There's also the coin style vibration motor and a flex ribbon that goes all the way up to the top motherboard. But there's the microphone just there, as well as a couple of other contacts for the Wi-Fi and cell and all that sort of stuff. Uh, there is a little cable here. I'm pretty sure that's for the digitizer, most likely. It's a little tiny one there, but I'll take this off and see what's under here. There's our little warranty seal just here, but we're gonna go ahead and just break through that. I mean, I had an idea where I thought, well, I could take it back after this review and just say, hey, look, I don't really like it, but I'm not going to do that. It's fine. I'll put this in the collection with the rest of them. And taking this board off. Realize that there's nothing too spectacular in here. It just looks pretty basic. However, see this here? There's a circle there. I would say that this board was meant to have a fingerprint sensor. Now, I'm not too sure where the connection would have been. Oh, just there. Right there would have been the connection for the fingerprint sensor just here. Unless this motherboard has been repurposed somewhere along the lines with other Vodafone smart devices, that's probably what that's for. But there you go. And unsnapping the battery connector just there, it seems we have a lot of like pull tabs going around. It's really hard to see, but there's just around there. So I'll see if I can use these to pull the battery out. Okay, that's pretty fair. It just comes out like that. And we can see the flex ribbons that connect from the sub board to the main board, as well as the display one as well. Um, yeah, nothing special going on there, but at least the battery is the 22nd of the 3rd, 2019. Yeah, that does make sense. The battery is removable and serviceable, so that's pretty good. If you do have one and the battery dies, you can replace it. Um, but I'm gonna just go ahead and somehow take it out. There we go. Yeah, I tore like majority of the adhesive off for here, but ah, it doesn't matter, it's all good. All right, let's go ahead and take the motherboard out, see if there's any thermal goop under here. But this is a solid metal frame, so yeah, it should actually be fine. It's not just all plastic. There is this metal frame going on in here. So it's not spectacularly cheap, but it is still cheap. There's two screws holding down the motherboard, so I'll have to take them off first. And taking the motherboard off reveals that there's no thermal goop whatsoever. There's also this cool little thing here, which shows important information about the device without having to take it apart. So that's... Kind of cool. You just pop over in the SIM tray and then this slides out. You grab a little screwdriver and just pull it out. This little thing here I've only seen on Sony Xperia phones like the Z1, Z2, etc, etc. So that's pretty cool, I guess. But we can see the loudspeaker just at the top there and the little camera cutout as well because everything is now on this motherboard here. And we have our SIM area. That's all we have for thermal. It's just black tape. That's it. Our 5 megapixel front camera there with no optical image stabilization. Nothing really much going on here. And then just flipping it around, we do get to see all our flex connectors. We do have some motherboard information. And our main 8 megapixel camera with no OIS. It's just a standard little guy. Nothing too exciting here. But we can see our secondary microphone, which did work during the camera test. And um, yeah, we got a couple of antenna connections as well. Single flash. And the area for the unused fingerprint sensor, which would have been cool. They should have added that, you know, considering the cost. But anyways, that wasn't really an exciting teardown, uh, but at least you got to see the guts of this thing and what's going on here. But look, it's nothing special at all. Well, explains why it was getting so hot in that area as well, because there's no thermal pads or anything like that. All right, now that the teardown is done, I'll go ahead and put it back together and we'll just go ahead and do the final conclusion and call this a video. Alrighty, phone has been reassembled and it's all working correctly. So I'll just show you the specifications just quickly. Just feel free to pause the video. Even though I've already been through the specs, well, 
you know, you can just read them again just in case. Just to reiterate that you're getting all that for 150 bucks and it's locked to Vodafone. Yeah. So let's go over the pros and cons of this device, shall we? It's going to be fairly quick because I've already gone through most of this already, but the positives that I can find is that the camera is not too bad, takes all right photos. Games work pretty well on this, I mean, depending on what they are, but Call of Duty and Minecraft worked pretty good on this. Ark unfortunately didn't, but that was kind of to be expected, I guess. The battery life in this isn't half bad, considering it's got a 3000 mAh battery. It's not too bad. It will last you a day. The rear cover is nice, of course. The speakers are pretty nice and loud, and cool quality is not too bad, but the cons, the screen to body ratio, the old design on a newer phone. I mean, it's a budget device, so I've got to give it some slack there. Uh, random ass glitches with the OS. Low specs for the price. No included case or screen protector included. And it's locked to the Vodafone network and you have to pay an extra 25 bucks to unlock it. All in all, it's not really worth it at all. Unless, as I said, if you're in a dire need and you need to purchase this phone because it's the only one that you can see and there's none of those around and you need this and you're on Vodafone, then okay, fair enough. Um, but if you find it secondhand, maybe you might want to take a look at it. If someone has already unlocked it, maybe. Okay, fair enough, but I just can't get over the bezels and stuff. It's just such a wasted opportunity to claim on the box that it's a full screen experience, but then you get this out of the box and it's like, ah, oh. all right, well, fair play, I guess. All in all, it's just not a value rich device. You can get better phones for the money, as I've said a million times throughout this video, and I highly recommend that you do that, because this one is just... Yeah, I'd leave it. As I said, if you find it second-hand and someone's already unlocked it and it's fairly cheap, okay, fair enough, but otherwise, find something else. If you want an iPhone X-looking thing, that's not even close to an iPhone X, just because it has a notch and a chin. Ah, uh, the rear cover's nice, though. I'll give it that. The rear cover is definitely nice. But anyways, I think that is it for this whole entire review. It has gone on for almost 45 minutes now, and so I shall leave it here. So thank you very much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And of course, timestamps are in the description as well as the first pinned comment, so you can skip through to your heart's content, and hopefully you've learned enough about this device and know not to buy it. I bought it so then you didn't have to. Take care, be good people, stay safe, don't panic, stay calm, relax and just take each day as it comes. All right, that's what I plan on doing and I hope you all plan on doing the same thing as well. All right, once again, take care and I'll see you in the next one, which will be more tech. I paid $110 Australian for a rear cover. That's very nice. Mm. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.